All right, new project. Um, I wanted to do uh, some instruments. And so I've always wanted one of these counters. These are uh, uh, Rickel Dana. Um, and these are good counters. And the, the reason I like these counters is that they have 10 digits, uh, which, is, which is nice. And uh, they get a lot of good press. Uh, I think they have a really good oscillator in them and they work good. Uh, this one has the uh, C input that goes up to 1.3 gigahertz. Um, and there's a known badness about these meters is that is the switches go bad on them. And this one is no exception. Some of these switches are just <laughs> dead. They're just completely dead. Now, um, these still go for pretty good money. I think used ones are still going for like 400 bucks or something like that. And I've, ha I have, I've had my eye on them. And once in a while, a cheaper one comes by. And recently, uh, a fairly cheap one came by. So he had this one listed for 190, which I thought was okay, uh, more than I wanted to spend. So I offered him 175 and he said, okay. Now, when it, when it came, I noticed that it was in much worse condition than I thought it was going to be. And I thought, hmm, maybe I didn't look close enough at the photographs on eBay. And I went back and I looked at the listing and sure enough, the one that I was bidding on looked nicer than this one. And uh, this one's even got a little bit of rust on the back. So it's, it's seen a little bit of weather. So the, uh, there's some rust here on some screws. Otherwise, you know, it looks okay. Um, and uh, anyway, it wasn't it it wasn't the one that I, you know, that I saw on on the listing, which was 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 one that was in fairly good condition. So I went back and I looked at it. Uh, first of all, I was just going to like ah whatever you know, I'll just take it. And then I started thinking about it. And said nah, I think it's a little bit too beat up. So I, I contacted the guys and he he said well oh I'm sorry the shipping department must have mixed yours up with another one. And he says you can send it back. I'll give you a full refund. Or if you want to keep this one, I'll give you a 50% discount on it. I thought, oh, for 85 bucks. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I think it's the perfect price point for the channel. Um, we have, a, we have a, a dead meter and uh, it certainly needs to have the keys replaced. And I'm not quite sure it works all together. It works maybe a little bit, but not all together. So let's go ahead and power this up and I'll show you what it does. my block out so I can raise the, raise the front a bit. Okay, let's turn it on. So the good news is that it powers up. It gives me four zero. Okay, fine. So let's, uh, let's put some frequencies in it, right? Uh, let's see, which is the easiest generator to, to grab a hold of? I gotta get around the camera here, sorry. Uh, let's turn this one on over here. I think that'll work. That'll work better. All right. Let's uh, let's see here. This one, the the uh, A input is supposed to go to 100 and 160 megahertz. So I'm putting in 100 megahertz, and it's saying, well, it's got the exponent right. It's saying to the power of six, but obviously the gate's not gating right. So, yeah, there's something funny going on here. Now, the C input is supposed to be good from 40, 40 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. So let's try the C input. Let's put that over here. And see, I can... So this key doesn't work, but this key does work. So I can go up, I can go up, but I can't go down. So I can go here to... Frequency, oh, this is frequency C at the top. So again, it gets the exponent right, but does this weird county thing. Now, normally you would hit this button over here, which is the resolution. And you can tell it to go, you know, as many digits as you want, but this key doesn't work. And this key, I don't know. It's just not working right. It's just not working right. Um, so anyway. This, this will be the project. So we will, we will work on this thing. 
Um, I think the first thing to do is I haven't seen inside yet, so let's crack it open and see what's in there. And if it's designed, yeah, if it's designed right, you just have to take two screws off uh, the back plate. This will slide out. This will slide out. Uh, I see. Just this piece. Okay. It's different than the ones I worked on before. There we go. Poof. All right. Put that over there. Oh, very nice big oven. Look at the oven. It's giant. That's really nice. So it's got a really nice time base in it. And uh, it doesn't look like anybody's been inside. It looks very, very clean. Um, this board here has the GPIB connector on it. So it may be an option board. And, oh yeah, very nice. So, I don't know if you can see all of this. So, yeah, like I said, here's the, uh, here's the nice oven. And the, uh, the, the front panel, I don't know if you noticed that, you probably can't, probably won't focus on this, but there's an on off hard switch and then there's a standby charge switch. So the, the, the nice thing about the standby switch is it allows the oven to continually keep warm and then you can just put it into, into standby. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is super cool. <laughs> you will like this. Uh, this is amazing. I've never seen one of these in an instrument like this. So uh, let's move you over. All right, do you see this thing? It says hours, and it's like a little um, mercury thermometer. Uh, and there's a little thing that, that moves up. And I don't remember exactly how these work. I think they might be mercury. I think, I think that's the way maybe these work. Um, so you can actually read the number of hours this thing has on it. Um, now, I don't know if these are just regular hours. Oh, times, times 100. So it says times 100 right on it. So the little marker is at about 2... No, wait a minute. 25... Okay, so 5, 10. 10 times 100. So 1,000 hours. So it has 1,000 hours on it. Um, Sorry, I had, to, I had to move it to see it. So this instrument has a thousand hours on it. I mean, that's just, that's just super cool. Uh, now, I don't know what possessed Rachel Dana to put that in there. Let me, let me change this thing to manual focus so I can actually, I can actually focus this thing. There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, I don't know what possessed them to put that in there. It must be something to do with the warranty thing that they have. Um, but yeah, an hours meter in, in the thing that is just, that is just super cool. I've never seen that before. Now, the other cool thing, um, let's see here, let's move it, uh, let's flip it over this way before we take the board out altogether. Um, so, uh, so this little coax here goes down to, to the, to the C input. So this shielded little box here is a bunch of preamplifiers and the uh, prescaler. Um, and then th there's a, all the other analog circuitries under here, under this, uh, under this uh, metal box here. So it is designed really, really nicely. Let's see if I can't take this top cover off here and give us a better. All right, I think the, uh, the board has loosened up. I don't know if, oh, I see. It's just held in with a, a ribbon cable. So I think, yep. All right, turn around so you can see what I see. Let's 
So there we go. Uh, yeah, GPIB. So this is just the GPIB section, and it goes on a goes on a header down here, which should be able to should be able to take out. Maybe I don't need to. Flip it over. Ooh, that capacitor there is bulge. Ooh, I don't like the looks of him. Well, maybe it's just the plastic. Yeah, maybe he's okay. Uh, okay, so let's take a closer look at everything here. All right, so we have a 684888. So 4888 must be the GPIB controller. And then we have a little micro running everything here. We have a 6805 with its own little RAM and ROM. So a little microcontroller right here just to do the GPIB. And a little thing there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, I'm going to want to get this out of there. So let me see if I can't... If I can't pry this up a bit. All right, so down here I have a Motorola... 14680 and a ROM chip and some kind of weird chip there. I don't know what that is. Hmm. I think that's a date code, 1984. So it's a Y6 8651. Is that a timer chip or something? I don't know. Hmm. Um, all right, a bunch of fun and little, there's a little piggyback board here with some surface mount parts on it, a little module down here with some surface mount parts on it, otherwise everything else is through hole. That's interesting. Um, yeah, here's the capacitor that's got that little, little bit of bulge on him. I'm probably, res I think I'll re put these caps in here, 1986. Uh, I think these caps probably need to go. I don't know. We can test them, maybe. Uh, so there's an 80 analog devices, 9687. Um, and then a big fancy chip here. Well, it's like a custom chip to me if I ever saw one. I don't know. Uh, but here's that module that does the uh, the 1.3 gigahertz down conversion. Um, yeah, pretty cool. But what we want to do is we want to learn how to take off the front panel. Oh, good. And the front panel's on connectors. There's two connectors here, so it should just come out the front. Now, looks like there might be screws in the side here. Okay, that is really strange. Never seen that before. All right. Um, and then the guy, these guys will need to come out. Oh, they're loose. I do have a spanner that I could put on them, but if they're loose, I'll just do it this way. Yeah, they are loose if. These BNCs need to be cleaned up really good, too. They're pretty, pretty bad. There we go. Is this thing attached to the bottom, anyhow? I don't know. There we go. All right, success. All right, so these connectors here needed to take the nuts off of those. This is a little uh, connector that pops onto this guy here. It's kind of clever. It, it's, it's a SM, mm, SMC, the little push-on kinds. And then the one on the front, I didn't actually need to take that off. That goes into that little socket there. I'll just leave it off for now, but I'll put it back on it. It could stay. It could say you don't need to take that off. And yeah, let's take a peek under this can here just because we can. 
can that we can. See what we can do. All right, oops, a little waver, wavy. Oh, look at that, ooh. Gentech, Scotland, awesome. Yeah, look at these relays here. Beautiful. Here's a little relay here too. All kinds of cool stuff. Assume these are relays. Maybe there's something else. I don't know. Maybe these are amps or I don't know what these are. Hmm. There'd be a lot of relays, wouldn't it? I uh this looks like a relay here too though. One maybe they're just um Oh, 100, yeah, these are like 50 ohm loads. Oh, yeah, you're switching in and out 50 ohm loads. So these are the 50, 50 ohm loads. They're 100 ohms each. So, yeah, one of them to switch in this load, one of them to switch in this load, maybe switch in the channels. Maybe some uh, gain settings here. Um, yeah, very cool. I like it. Always good to see things under under shielded cans. Um, a lot of care was taken in this instrument when they designed it, so probably why it gets the good reputation. One wouldn't think, ah, gigahertz, yeah, it's fine, you don't need to shoot anything, it'll be fine. But yeah, this one, this one is good. Looks like there's a place for maybe extra RAM here, or maybe extra program. They were looking maybe expand the program I don't know and uh, what we want to work on is this unit here and get it cleaned up and replace the switches and oh my god is this thing filthy now, there's an inner sill part in the back that's for the display 7218 um, yeah let's uh, let's get to it 